Good morning. Tonight's supper is starting here at 7.19 in the morning. I have two small venison roasts here. I'm just patting them dry. I did the first one already. We are making Mississippi pot roast tonight. And if I can do this one-handed, there we go. Just want to dry your roast. That gets you the best uh, searing like ability possible. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right, but um, a dry roast will just sear nicer. And that's it. I had a little baking grease. There's my baking grease. I put that in my cast iron pan. I'm going to let this go for about four minutes on one side, flip them over for another four minutes. While that's happening, I'm going to get my crock pot ready to go. So Mississippi pot roast, I know there's a lot of sizzling going on, but I'm just going to talk over that for you guys. What it requires is one ranch packet and one Lipton onion soup mix packet. And I can't remember how many of these pepperoncinis, but um, maybe six or eight of these and then a stick of butter, which I still have to grab. I am out of my onion soup mix. I actually just used it like the day or two before forgot that it was earmarked for this recipe. So what I will do is just use two tablespoons of this beef uh, bouillon flavor, and I will also use two tablespoons of minced onion. That pretty much gives you the same flavor as an onion soup mix packet. The ranch dressing, a stick of butter, some of these peppers. We're gonna put it on low for prob eight hours would be the minimum. And I'm hoping that I can even get in 10 hours if possible. Alrighty, this is what it looks like when you first put it into the crock pot. I have not ever made it exactly like this before. However, uh, I have made venison roasts before with using garden fresh um, banana peppers, which I think is similar to these pepperoncinis. And so, uh, except, you know, these are more like Kind of like pickled you know because they're in a juice vinegar water salt yeah these are pickled the fresh ones are not but anyway this is what it looks like i think that the butter is going to be a fabulous addition to venison roast because sometimes venison roasts can tend to be a little bit on the dry side um and i just think that the butter is really really going to add great flavor and great moisture I am so looking forward to having this tonight we are going to have this with instant mashed potatoes and then I do have a number of bags of different types of vegetables, frozen ones in the freezer. So whatever I have at least two bags of, that's what we're going to be having for supper. I will uh, show that to you, of course, in like eight or ten hours. Good morning everybody, it's Jennifer here from A Country Life and uh, welcome, so glad that you're here. If at any point in this video you think, hey, that's pretty good, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And it's been a pretty normal day around here so far. Uh, I think it's around 10.30 in the morning right now. We just uh, did some of the basics. Washed eggs, did some laundry. What else did it? Oh, <laughs> and speaking of just your normal July day, I put away Easter decorations and uh you know the kids were playing outside and so with some of the 
you know, with some of my house things done. I've been still working at trying to keep to that block schedule that I talked to you guys about. And so I've been in the house pretty much, you know, all morning just trying to do, like I made our bed, I put away la yesterday's laundry, uh, you know, did today's laundry, just stuff like that, doing all those house things. Got a uh, roast ready for supper tonight. I'm doing that Mississippi pot roast with the pepperoncinis and ranch and onion soup mix and the butter. <laughs> butter makes everything better. And then, um, yeah, so just kind of getting, you know, a lot of my house stuff done. And now I'm moving on to the part of the day where I'm gonna be working outside. So we're gonna fertilize the garden. I wanna fertilize my potatoes. Uh, I think Warren's gonna get me, get the tractor over by the hose for me so I can fill it up so I can go and water the horse pasture garden. Well, wait, we had a lot of rain yesterday. Maybe I don't, oh, lighting, lighting, maybe I don't have to do that. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do our typical, you guys. Peter and I are going to work on the fertilizing part and then Joe is going to be running the empty, uh, empty jugs back to Maria and then Maria is gonna fill them up, right? Uh -uh. Yeah. Uh -uh. So that's what's going to happen here. Yeah, what's going on, Joe? What's, oh my goodness. <laughs> Joe, only you. Yeah, take it. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Could get the baseball. Let's see. Can we see it up there? It's up there. Wiggle the branch and see if it'll come down. There we go. <laughs> Okay, back to fertilizing. I saw one with lots of things, like three or something. Really long ones? Maria, is that good? Not too many troubles today from the kids with weeding. Peter, he actually, lo or not weeding, I'm sorry, fertilizing. He actually loves being able to fertilize the plants. And uh, he's kind of like taking the corn as like his own because he has been the one to fertilize it, I think just about every single time. Um, and Joe, we got him, we got him to do it. I mean, we had to, a couple of strong encouragements, a few, um, brother and sister between him and Maria. They kind of got into it a couple times because he wasn't moving fast enough for her. But uh, in the end, we got all the fertilizing done and I'm happy about that. So the kids are back up at the house because what, or maybe not in the house, but someplace. I don't really know where they went, but they went and filled up all the jugs one last time and took it over by the chicken coop because that's where I have my buckets of potatoes. And I told Peter if he wanted, he could fertilize the potatoes. If he didn't want to, I would totally do it. So I don't know, we'll see when we get up there. But I just spent probably 15, 20 minutes down here um, just kind of weeding a little bit. So let me give you, yeah, I don't wanna bore you guys with garden tours, but um, let me just give you a couple peeks. Okay, so there's the corn. Not tasseling yet at all. Um, I see one of these Japanese beetles. Darn it, those things have to go. Oh, those things are annoying and they just defoliate everything. Okay, so um, yeah, the corn is looking really good. I would give it another, oh, oh, not, not I was going to say two weeks, but right there is the beginning of a tassel. So, okay, I would say anywhere from a week to two weeks, things should really be tasseling out there. I went through and worked on the carrots again because you can only do a little at a time you just don't want to disrupt their roots as they are you know obviously trying to uh, get established because they're so like frail i want to say especially in the early times here ah, bug in my hair and uh the ones on this end down here i just I'm not sure if they're gonna survive. I mean, they'll probably survive, but I'm not sure if they're actually gonna grow 
into carrots before we end up getting frost. And we only have a couple here, one there, and then one here. So, um, yeah, I think it was just a little too dry on this little corner right here, and I should have been paying more attention to that, but I wasn't. The green beans, still a complete disappointment. Even the ones that were growing, I think I'm down to maybe around 20 plants now. This one is dying, no idea why. <laughs> um, these five, is that five in a row there? That is amazing. Uh, they're actually still growing and surviving. That whole row actually is uh, still surviving. I have a volunteer dill, which is of course beautiful, even though, you know, I mean, I did nothing <laughs> to that one. Here is another one. This one is going to break off. You can just see. I have no idea. It's like drying up at the, at the base. I don't know if there's something bothering it. This one, same thing. Yep, that one is all bent and brown at the base. We are starting to get tomatoes. Not red yet, but I do have green tomatoes in there. So I'm really, really excited. And when you go through and look closely, there are a lot of them. There's another little grouping of them. So a lot of tomatoes are coming. Even some of the Amish paste. Those are Amish paste right there. So really excited. Peppers are looking beautiful, blossoming, but no peppers yet. I do have blossoms down in there. That's great. I went through and I weeded the onions as well today. Um, I just really want them to have as much space to grow the biggest onion possible. You see I have <laughs> volunteer dill all over in here and I couldn't bring myself to pull it because I know that um, I will use that with making pickles. My battery is about to go here, but someplace in here I am just starting to get broccoli. So I'm going to have to be watching those carefully over the next week. And lots and lots of cucumbers. We've been eating cucumbers like crazy. You know how it is. <laughs> you, you might know how it is with the garden. At first you cannot wait to get that first whatever it might be. Tomato, cucumber, whatever your favorite is. And then after, you know, like two weeks, mom's just like, oh. The kids are like, oh, I want a snack. And mom's like, oh, you can have cucumbers. And they're like, oh my gosh, I've eaten so many cucumbers. So anyway, that is going on. I do have sunflowers and those have been awfully pretty. I love watching those uh, open. I had told you before, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen with the cantaloupe, but here is one really nice size. It's like softball maybe sized. And there's another small one that's an egg sized in there. And I know there are an, are multiple. Oh, there's another one over here. Uh, right down in there, there's one. So the bees are still hard at work pollinating. So I hope I keep getting um, cantaloupe. I do want to do a little reading. I have, I feel like I heard somewhere that if you pinch off whatever growth is after the fruit set on the cantaloupe, they will grow bigger instead of continuing to put more energy into making more flowers beyond that. So I need to go and I'm gonna do a little research on that today uh, when I have a little more of a, like a quiet time. Zucchini, of course, is crazy. Okay, I need to get up, do the potatoes. Like I said, my battery is going to die here. Potatoes are fertilized and I have a fresh battery here. So I'm sure I got cut off in mid-sentence before, but we are in the house. This It is lunchtime. It's just 10 to 12 right now. And yes, those are clean fingernails, but the dirt. Oh my gosh, I need to use my like scrubby scrubby. I have some leftover potatoes and meatloaf. Here's a cucumber. Here are creamy cucumbers. Here are a few cucumber slices, peanut butter. I have some bread here. I'm gonna get the jelly out and I'm just gonna make everybody lunches. There's really only five of us home uh, at this point. So um, lunch doesn't have to be a real big deal. And I'm just gonna make up, like I said, just individual plates. Grandma sent a box <laughs> and they finally got it in the mail today. So everybody is super excited. Kind of you got a coloring book. What'd you get, Peter? 
um, Scooby-Doo coming. Back. Nice, Scooby-Doo. Ghost. Of course, she sent along some treats. We got some M&Ms and fruit snacks. Oh, no, gummy bears. Oh, boy. I think I'm going to whop her and uh, check it. I think Dad's going to want those gummy bears. No. Maria is over here with envelopes of... Grandma is just good for, like, stickers, and she just saves fronts of cards and all kinds of little things. Right? Super fun. <laughs> and you got some cookies. Oh, yeah. It is time for me to do my once a month grocery shopping. Uh, so I am pretty low. Like, I have a bunch of stuff, but then I don't, you know? I'm sure you guys get to that same point where... I mean, I could cook meat all day long <laughs> and instant mashed potatoes, but um, I don't have like any flour right now. I'm out of vanilla. I'm out of baking soda. Out of chocolate chips. We are out of chocolate chips. I am now out of honey. I'm out like just out of all kinds of different things. So, so what I really wanted to make today was this Boston cream. It's like a Boston cream pie, but it's a poke cake version of it. And I first, I saw Tiffany at Large Family Love mention it, and so then I went and looked it up, and I'm like, I really want to make that. So I still have the ingredients because it's so, it's such basic ingredients. Um, you start with a cake mix, and I have everything that goes in a cake mix. Um, and then you just need vanilla pudding, excuse me, and a can of chocolate frosting, which I still have because I bought that at the beginning of the month <laughs> when I did my once a month shopping for July. Just never, ever made it. So I would like to do that, but the problem is that that says that it's best if it sits overnight. But I really think that my family wants some kind of dessert here for like this afternoon or tonight or something. So I had to get a little creative and I remembered this recipe, which is in, and I've cooked out of this cookbook before, One Pot Meals, and I know a lot of you uh, have said to me that you picked this one up. Uh, this has the these um, double crunch bars. And I have written in here, they taste just like Sunbelt granola bars. So if you know and if, if you've had those before, this tastes very much like that. Now, I'm out of chocolate chips and I'm also out of vanilla. So I'm just winging it here. I hope. I do have maple extract. I just am not sure if maple extract is going to be the right flavor for in here. Um, so I'm just skipping the extract altogether. This is what it's looking like so far. What I like about this recipe is that everything goes into the mixer at once, and then you just mix the heck out of it, press it in a pan, bake it for 10 minutes, and let it cool, and there we go. We have like homemade granola bars, basically. That's what these are. Here's what they look like before I put them in the oven. They're gonna go at 450 degrees for just 10 minutes. I'll bring them out, let them cool, and then cut them. So the bars are, or actually we're just gonna call these granola bars. They are out of the oven. Amber's home from the gym. <laughs> what do you think of the granola bars? Yeah, they're really good. Mm -hmm. That's it? Just they, really they, good? They taste like candy bar. Okay, that that's like the, per the perfect granola bar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday's, which way you think is? Well, I thought that too, but the other day we thought it was that way and then we ended up having to walk all the way around. Yesterday's rain was... I, I'm just super, super grateful for it. One, natural rain is just like so much better for watering everything than irrigating. And um, it was really, really nice because then Warren didn't have to get up this morning to irrigate so early. This um, really glares in the sun. It does. That's a pretty necklace, isn't it? Wow. Um, yeah, so he has not been feeling... Maria, I think you were right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Warren has not been feeling the best lately. We're unsure if it's allergies because, you know, sometimes that makes you like physically sick when your allergies really flare up. Or if it's just totally just being so tired <laughs> in the physical work. He's been working like just really odd hours. July is one of those months, at least with cranberry farming, where you have to time everything so perfectly as far as fertilizer applications and any worm sprays and things like that. And with the system that we use and that he's pretty much it besides 
Sam and Sam's friend who works on the marsh on Mondays and Tuesdays, um, he sometimes he has to do things really late at night because you have to wait for it to get very calm to do like fertilizing Mom, or spraying. He's up at the house. No, he's, he's just over here? he's over in this corner somewhere. And so there's times when like he'll work super super early in the morning because he'll be up uh, irrigating and checking sprinklers and everything. And then he'll have more like office work during some of the daytime hours. And then as soon as supper is done, he's back out. Oh, there he is. And then as soon as supper is done, he's back out filling the sprayer with water and doing his calculations for chemicals and things like that. Um, and then he comes in, he'll sleep for a couple hours, <laughs> and then he gets up because waiting for whenever it's going to be the calmest, because uh, you really don't want drift or anything like that. Um, waiting for it to be calm and he'll be up at like two in the morning or something to put on his you know worm sprays and uh, pesticide applications so so all of that to say he has not been feeling the greatest lately and he's been seeming really tired oh, those pesky deer flies yesterday's rain was great i guess that's where i was going with all of this and today is fertilizing he actually wanted to fertilize on Monday, but it was rainy and windy. No, Monday. Was it rainy? I think we were supposed to get some rain, and then we ended up not getting the rain. And then we, necess we weren't necessarily supposed to get rain yesterday, and then we got rain yesterday. So, and it was windy and everything. But finally today we have a calm day. As you probably can tell, I'm walking him outside and the wind is not whipping and <laughs> whistling in the camera um, uh, microphone. So I have just a thing of water here. Maria has one of those granola bars and she ran way up ahead. She was a little tired of listening to me yak into the camera. But isn't that sweet? He gets down and she's so happy to bring him a little treat. <laughs> I hope that this will help him get through the day a little bit better. Hi, brought you some water. I didn't know if you brought one down here or not. I did, but it's almost empty and already warm. What do you got playing on the headphones today? Um, Sean Hannity. Good. Just got done listening to Rush. Okay, how's the, what do you think of that granola bar? It's good. You like that? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to let them cool completely. <laughs> None of us could wait. We just ate them warm. <laughs> They're good. Mm -hmm. Cranberries are looking great. Yes, the cranberries are looking great, aren't they? Those strawberry vines? No. That's like a dewberry oh. vine or something. Mom. Yeah. Look at that one. Look at those already turning a little pink. <laughs> How pretty. These are super lush. This is just kind of the fertilizer wrap up for the year. So we'll see. We'll see how the vines respond. The last one, huh? Well, the last one on paper. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like after they eat on it a while. Mm -hmm. There's a few beds that I think they have a heavy enough crop, I'll probably do them a little more. Mm -hmm. And then the renovation will give them more because we're trying to grow vines. Sure. <coughs> I told I everyone that you weren't feeling very well. Yeah. And now you have granola. Mm -hmm. it sounded like you said Corona. No. <laughs> no. Nope. I shouldn't I laugh. I, I don't mean to just, laugh yeah. about it, but it's just funny the way you. <laughs> I think it's just allergies, honestly. Uh huh. And maybe <clears throat> lack of sleep. That too. It is beautiful out here today, though. Just beautiful. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. Oh, yeah. There are some blackberries. Let's see. Mm. Nice. Yeah, eat it up. We're just going to take a little peek. We have a lot of red blackberries, don't we? 
And a few that have already ripened. Ooh, there's a couple juicy ones way back in there. Yeah. I wonder if I could get back there, but I have shorts on. Huh. Mm, can you grab that one? Right up here? That one. Sure. No. That one. Yep. I'll eat that one. Hi! <laughs> Remember when Joe would just go to the first tree and just grab an apple? Yep. Every day he would just go grab apples, wouldn't he, and eat them all day long. Didn't matter if they were ripe yet or not. Oh, nice. This tree is Wolf River, so these get enormous. They're big green ones. Oh, are they nice looking Look so far? Look at that one up there. Right. They're looking good. That's good. That means you're starting to put a little blush on. It'll still be a long time before these are ready, though. Not till September for sure. <laughs> Maria and I took a little detour on the way home. Or not really detour, but just a slow walk home. <laughs> oh, and I really, really have to start varnishing trim boards. Um, Eska wants to go swimming. But uh, I just don't have that in me right now to have to get out all the varnishing stuff. But I think I'm going to just get some water, regroup, and get back out there and start varnishing. Okay, so all the wood is uh, varnished now, and if you are new here and you're not sure why I'm varnishing all this, all this uh, wood, all this trim, it's because we have um, redone our bathroom, and we want the new trim to match the old trim that's like still in the hallway, and so. Um, and some, you know, when you take trim off, sometimes. Um, you know, pieces break or crack or whatever. And then the in the trim in the bathroom, also we just didn't want to salvage because it did actually have like some uh, mold growth on it and I just didn't even want to worry about sanding that off. So Warren built all this trim. So this actually started as trees right here on our property and then he, um, you know, had them sawn into lumber and then he cut them down to size. Actually first, a couple days ago he surfaced them all up and then he is it called jointing them or joining or I think it's jointing them and then after that let's see what happens then he cut them down to size and then I came through yesterday and did the sanding and staining he helped with the staining yesterday also and now today I just worked on varnishing that took a long time <laughs> So um, it is time to go in and have supper because it's already 10 to 6. My roast is plenty done. That's been going since um, 7.30 this morning or something, something like that. You know, so if you happen to be thinking, I don't know the first thing about doing wood, I didn't either <laughs> until not too long ago. So I had kind of refinished trim for that we had taken off in the bathroom and the hallway project and everything. And then we had to make some new trim because we just didn't have enough. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much my beginning into woodworking. It's pretty fun. I mean, I'm not doing the cuts, just the finish work and I actually kind of enjoy it. So, all right, we're gonna go in, make some supper. Thought I heard somebody outside, but I don't see anyone. Um, all I'm gonna do is get some instant mashed potatoes going and then also some vegetables. So I have some frozen vegetables in the freezer here. Let's check. We're gonna do broccoli. This is how the roast turned out. 
It seems to be quite tender. It's been going for 10 hours. Whoops, sorry, I'm <laughs> not even getting it in the camera screen here. It smells really good. We have some broccoli. Just microwave that quick. What are these, Joe? Uh-huh. And what are these? I don't know. Cucumbers. Joe, <laughs> take This is like the most dangerous game ever, this whole tetherball business. Oh my gosh. Not when I'm playing it by myself. Well, not when you're by yourself, no, but. So far, mom and dad are in the lead because they won four times. Okay. So they got four points. And Peter and Zero. Mom, so far you and dad are at oh. four points and, and, and Peter at zero. Oh, you're keeping score nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> What are you calculating, Maria? Well, there's millions of opening sunflowers. There are. And that's how many tomatoes I found. Let me see up close. Those are all the tomatoes? Mm-hmm. Those are all the tomatoes I found. And then there's four already bloomed sunflowers. There's Ooh. 24 <laughs> just opening sunflowers and there's more of them yeah they are so pretty this is my favorite one right behind me here it's like this really light kind of lemon yellow it's so pretty god I love that oh my goodness Peter look at that nice fish that is an awesome fish. If you don't know what type of fish this is, this is called a bass. It is a bass. Yeah, what did you catch it on? Um, just a red and green twister tail. Cool. Dad caught a perch and a crappie. Uh -huh. Already? And a white twister tail. Yeah, and a bobber. Nice. So now that we have have our uh, wrists thoroughly bruised. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you really it's gonna take some time to recover from that one yeah yeah, yeah. everybody's How am moved I gonna on. hold my cup of coffee in the morning <laughs> we've moved on to a little fishing oh, oh except sorry, these Dad. deer flies how many times did I say that in the video today these deer flies I, yeah! what do you got going Joe I don't know you don't know I don't know hunk hmm what are you using to fish with? A bobber or a twister tail or what? Yeah, pumpkin seed. A what? Pumpkin seed. Oh, you're trying to catch a pumpkin seed? I you have it. one! Oh my gosh, Joe! What is it? Not a perch! No, no I think it's, it's a bluegill. A bluegill! <laughs> Turn! Oh my gosh, that's nice of you, Peter, to help him out. Back. <laughs> you didn't fall back. Okay. Not turd. Say goodbye. Oh, Joe. Got goodbye, punk. <laughs> oh, good. He is a nut. Yeah. I am not missing everything, like, you know, all the activities being canceled. Mom, the garden 
I'm not missing it at all. And sometimes I'm kind of sad to say that. Oh, I'm not sad. Well, I mean, I'm not sad to say it, but I feel bad because I know there's a lot of people that are really missing all the different activities. But, man, it's so nice to be home and just do our own thing here. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yep, just a second. I'll be right there. Uh, for counting all the tomatoes I found, 